You know, I am really persuaded that God has a plan. You see, I really get concerned, really concerned when I see how God works because God seems to prefer an individual over a team. God seems to prefer an individual over a committee. Check this out. God has this plan to replicate his image, his likeness across the world. He begins with an individual. His name is Adam. He had a family in mind, but he begins with an individual. Before Eve comes along, he begins with an individual. He had a plan. When God decided that his plan was to bless the nations of the world, he didn't call together a team or a committee. He calls an individual. His name is Abraham. And he uses an individual to bless the nations. God looks at the suffering of the children of Israel in Egypt. And he has a plan. And he decides not to put together a team or a committee, but he puts together, he raises an individual. His name is Moses. And he sends Moses with a very clear assignment and a very clear message. Let my people go. Along the way, Moses realized that he needed a lot of help to lead this children of Israel and so he puts together a team but God never called a team God called the individual I look at the children of Israel faced with this dilemma they are in the desert and the promised land is not too far away and God decides once again I'll raise an individual he raises Joshua so has it ever occurred to you that God seems to prefer an individual over a team to carry out his plan and his plan is redemption redemption now by the time you get to the book of judges god had the ability to call together all these judges ehud samson barak all of them but he raises one individual after another individual now, by the time you get to the book of Nehemiah, he decides he's going to raise one individual to accomplish his redemptive plan and agenda for Israel. You see, by then, the walls of Jerusalem had lay in ruins for about a hundred years. There were guys who grew up and died with broken walls. They were born, they found broken walls. It was Kawaida. They died and left broken walls. I have a feeling Nehemiah is born in captivity, but God gives him a message and God gives him a burden and he sends him back to Jerusalem. Once again, God chooses an individual. But Watch this. Whereas God chooses an individual and prefers an individual over a team or over a committee, God requests that, that individual will look for a team to carry out his redemptive agenda. God knows very well that you cannot do it on your own. But he always begins with an individual. And tonight I am persuaded that just like God used Nehemiah from the most unlikely destination. This guy was a slave. Yes, he was serving the king and the cupbearer, but he was a slave against his will and against his wish. God uses the most unlikely person from the most unlikely place. He sends him back to Jerusalem and he uses him to accomplish this goal and this vision in the most unlikely time, 52 days. But listen now, as I, as, I, as I bring this to a close. God had a redemptive plan for all of us. 
And instead, he had the capacity to actually call the disciples, give them this message, but he decides to send his very own son, an individual, an individual. When Jesus descends in Palestine, he raises a team who carry forward his message. Now, this is the message that I have on my heart. We have a situation, friends. We have a situation. Our walls have been broken down. Our walls lie in ruins. The gospel music industry is desolate. You need to be honest. You need to be factual. You need to be sincere. We are at a very bad place. We are at a very vulnerable place. You will know that your walls have been destroyed. When you begin to excuse the obvious, when you begin to rationalize sin, and when you begin to drift away from the true north, you will know that your walls have collapsed. When it is okay for us to cohabit, no big deal. It's okay for us just to live like married people. There is no sense of conviction, no sense of sin. Everything goes. You see, the walls were put in place to shield the children of Israel. They were to preserve them. They were to protect them. You will know your walls have been destroyed when anything goes. And as a pastor, let me be honest with you. Our walls in the gospel music industry have collapsed. We become a mocking and laughing stock. You don't need to look very far to find almost any kind of scandal. You just need to look beside you and you find it right there in our house. But there's some good news here. God has a plan. Tell your neighbor, God has a plan. And here is God's plan. God calls an individual. He doesn't call a team. You see, God does not relate to us as the gospel music industry. Mm -mm. God doesn't relate to us as while I was our groove. While I was our gospel. Mm -mm. God relates to us as individuals. That's why he's a relational God. That's why he calls us to a very personal walk with him. Here's what I see as I pray for us. I see God raising individuals. Individuals. Some who are here, some who are not here. And he will give them a very clear vision, a very focused message, a very heavy burden for the gospel industry. And it is that individual, God requires of that individual, those individuals, to raise teams that will rebuild, that will restore, and will reclaim our broken walls. God has a plan. He wants to use you, not all of us. Not your neighbor, by the way, not your neighbor. He wants to use you. By the way, he's not your neighbor. He wants to use you. Trust me. He wants to use you. You. I mean you. Not your neighbor. I mean you. He wants to use you, you, you. But he requires of us. He requires of us like he required of Nehemiah. To have hearts that are fully given to him. And to have hands that are totally, totally surrendered to him. You see, Nehemiah from the get-go... When he got this word from his brother Hanani that Jerusalem was vulnerable, you could tell that his heart was given to God because it bothered him. It bothered him. He wept, he fasted. You cannot be the right, you can't be that candidate 
that I'm talking about who cares nothing, who is not bothered, whether we are exposed or covered. Mm -mm. He requires of you to be one whose heart is moved with what moves him. Nehemiah was moved by what moved God. You see, the walls reflected who God was to the, to the nation of Israel. They were a fortified perimeter fence. They spoke of who God was. And if you're going to be that kind of person that God is going to use to rebuild, to restore, and to reclaim, we must be moved by what moves the heart of God. God cannot coexist with darkness. God can never, he will never coexist with darkness. He is light. He is the very embodiment of light. Today I'm going to make an altar call. Not for the industry, but for individuals who are saying, I resonate with that message. I want to sign up because I want my heart to be totally given to God. But not just my heart. My hands. You see, hands speak of our skill, of our giftings and of our ability. I spoke this and I'll speak and say again. Every gift that God has given us was designed for his kingdom and to reflect his glory. Every gift and every ability that God has given us was designed to reflect his kingdom and for his glory. Nehemiah's heart was totally given to God by his hands. You see, he had been serving the king in captivity with his hands. But God needed those hands to rebuild, to restore, and to reclaim the walls of Jerusalem. And God is calling upon, not you, but you not, not your neighbor, but you. You, I mean you. God wants to use you. I wonder how many will say, I resonate with that message. And I want to make a commitment this day that God will make his vision, his plan, his message crystal clear in my spirit and in my heart because God is counting on you. Our walls may have been destroyed, but you know what? It's not over. It is not over. Whenever God is up to something, huge and above and beyond us he will get us to feel a little bit uncomfortable he will cause us to feel uncomfortable but when we respond appropriately he will come through so i'm done i wonder how many of us will say here if i see you know what i want to sign up just stand and come That's simple. We don't have to close our eyes. We don't have to lift our hands. That's it. Just stand and come. Not everybody. Not everybody. Not everybody. Not everybody. And they're saying, you know what? I'm willing to pay the price. It's going to be costly. I'm willing to pay the price as an individual because I realize that God prefers an individual of our committee or of our team who wants to join this that I hear thank you not everybody because the commitment we're going to make here is lifelong it's a lifelong commitment some of you have despised yourselves. Some of you have been unsure of yourself. But you know one time God spoke to you and you are a custodian. You are a custodian of the industry. It is you God is waiting for. It is you God is counting on. He will equip you with the skill. He will equip you with the resources, human and otherwise, to ensure that his agenda, his plan is delivered. 
You see, Nehemiah was considered an outsider. I'm sure when he showed up in Jerusalem, guys were like, hey, Atu metoko hapi? Atu okai kawa mwizraeli wewe. The least likely person, the most unlikely person. I want to close this in 30 seconds. Is there anybody else who wants to join this? Let's get to stand. You know your life is in a mess. You know it's in a mess. You've been excusing sin. You've been rationalizing failure. You've been compromising. You've been embracing darkness yet you're a child of light. But you're saying, I want to make a commitment this day to stand for the kingdom of God. I want to call you forward. Just stand where you are seated. I want to begin with you. Then I make a very special prayer for these who are here. You're there, you're saying. But there's no for closing eyes. Mm-mm. 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 Turn to your story. You're seated and you're saying, you know what? Pasi, I just want to be real. My life is in a mess. But I realize that there's a God who has a plan. And I'm calling upon him to fix it this evening. Please, just do yourself a favor and stand. I'll pray for you. No condemnation, by the way. No condemnation. That's it. Thank you. Who else? Just be bold. That's it. Who else? Let's make it quick. Let's make it quick. Let's make it quick. Let's make it quick. Anybody else? Anybody else? You're saying, please. Because God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you. Let him fix it. Your life is falling apart. And you're saying, you know what? I want God to rebuild it. Rebuild it. I want him to restore me. I want to reclaim my place as a child of the kingdom. Just stand. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have to, we don't have to know the details. God already knows. God already knows. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Don't be embarrassed. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? It doesn't matter who you are. Just this is between you and God. God has a plan and he's going to fix that life. Let me pray for you who are standing. Anybody else? Let me pray for you. Let us pray. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, I thank you for this. Your children who are standing, just confessing that their life is a mess. It's not a true reflection of who you call them to be. Father, you are acquainted with the finer details of their lives and their struggles. I pray that the power of the Most High will overshadow them, will come upon them. Lord, as your servant, I take power and authority. I rebuke every claim of the devil. I break loose every claim of sin, every negative word uttered over their lives. Lord, every foundational struggle. Lord, I dismantle every altar in their lives that has been raised to strange and foreign gods. I dismantle it from the very roots and I ask and pray that freedom will be their portion. I ask and pray the Lord you will rebuild their lives, that you will restore their lives to something beautiful, that they will reclaim their place. Lord, in your kingdom and even in the industry, I ask that there will be a fresh wind and a fresh fire blowing through their hearts and souls. In Jesus' name, please be seated.